morning, everyone. My name is Ane Agostini. I'm CID. I'm C CEO of CID Insurance Programs, and I'm going to be your um, your instructor today for our webinar on how to build your commercial business. And we want you to build that with CID Insurance Services. We provide a lot of educational tools and um, templates that make will make your life a lot easier. So. Um, without further ado, let's talk about some logistics. Um, as most of you know, or uh, uh, will know, is that you will be muted because there's too many of you to be um, on the phone talking at the same time. Um, so you won't be able to speak, but we want to hear from you. I want any questions that you have, please just pose them in the chat room anytime throughout the webinar, and um, I'll stop and answer them for you. Uh, a, we, we, we do uh, ask that you fill out a short survey after the webinar, and we, we, we want feedback, so we'd appreciate um, your, your time in filling that out. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Uh, I know we have some people that um, may have a combination of people that know who we are as, um, uh, as, a, as a wholesaler. And so we're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go briefly over uh, what we do here at CID um, that will help you build that commercial book. What's our product appetite, and then um, why you should you shouldn't focus only on new business growth, or let's just say the other the other side of it, focusing only on your renewals and not focusing on new business, um, is is another um, important discussion to have. And then how to retain your commercial renewals, that's, that's important. Sometimes we're so busy we don't stop to think about, so we have systems in place. And then what tools do the CID have to offer you that you can find on our website? Okay, so a little bit about us. Um, we are a smaller wholesaler uh, out of San Diego, um, but we are smaller does not mean, you know, um, that we don't do a great job. One of the things about us is that we are very, very specialized at what we do. Each of our underwriters has been with us a while. They're very knowledgeable. And so it is um, that we, we really do uh, uh, provide commercial products. And we, we can do anywhere from preferred. So if you're a broker uh, that does not have a lot of markets, we, we have access to the preferred markets. And then we are able to manage your hard to place risk as well. So we go that full gamut and um, and we know our market, so um, we're good at placement. Uh, we write in 14 states, and so we are here to serve you in those states. And so if you're writing in multiple states, please feel free to submit um, risk for any of these 14 states. So why? Just as a reminder for those that do business with us and um, who could probably vouch for our great underwriters uh, and those that are new to us, um, there's a, what we do is our claim to fame and we focus heavily on is fast and easy quotes. And the ways that we go about that is our, our underwriters are knowledgeable, they're experienced, and the one thing we do is we're, that they are responsive. They answer their phones, they answer their emails, and they get back to you. They let you know if you have a question, they'll, they get back to you and let you know whether what app to use um, and or whether if, you, if we can write a risk or not, you know, just send a quick um, email to the underwriter and they will get back to you. Um, we have a customizable marketing material, um, which uh, Jacob, our um, uh, is continuously updating and adding more classes of business and coverages uh, to make it easier for you to use those. Those are customizable. You get to put your information on them and, and, and use those. I've seen a lot of people use those on LinkedIn, and that's been successful for them uh, on their site. Um, so we also have a lucrative commission structure uh, that ranges usually from 10 to 15%. Uh, depending on the carrier and the product, uh, and again, we are we we really are big on education, which is a little unusual for 
a um, excuse me uh, for uh, a webinar. Uh, I mean, for a wholesaler like ourselves, uh, we do webinars every two weeks, uh, and we have um, uh, we have educational videos, and um, and I'd be glad to do office training. So we have recorded webinars, so you can go and watch an inventory of webinars. You can, have, you can share those with anyone in your office. They're all around 30 minutes. Uh, and so it's a great way to, to gather more information on, um, on you know, different classes of business that you may be weak on or coverages that you want to learn more about. And then um, we focus on both renewal and new business production. And so the, that importance is that you, know, you want a policy enforced growth um, because you have to pay equal attention to both. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we, we go here. Okay, here are our um, products. These are the top products. I'm going to take them by our underwriters. This is Sienna Vasquez, and she's our professional liability underwriter. She's very good. All of our underwriters are great. And so this is just some of the top products. Um, we She writes a whole slew of types of um, professional liability and different classes of business. So, um, so you you can see here that um, these probably are some that you might be you might ha you know um, have a risk that you may want to submit. And always look at new business and your renewals because uh, you, you should always be remarketing your renewals in order to make sure that you've got the right premium and you don't lose that business to the competition. Okay. This is Teresa Cochran. She is our. She writes a, a, a mishmash of commercial, and uh, her specialties are probably more in the realm of garage and um, contractors. She's very good at, at that. But you can see there's a wide variety on this sheet um, that uh, she specializes in. So uh, feel free to reach out to her for any any of these uh, products. And then there's Michelle Belden. She's our she's a, again a variety of commercial, and she specializes in nonprofit. But uh, but as well, she is a specialty in apartments, commercial buildings, your lessor's risk, and your community association. So she she she's you know if you like that you know the heavy property risk, um, she's definitely very experienced in it and. Um, would be a great person that has lots of markets uh, to help you with. Okay, so then now we have workers' comp. Lexi Johnson does a, a fabulous job um, with comp. She can write small to, to, to large and very large uh, and can be very competitive with the markets that we have available. So you can see a lot of classes of business. Uh, that seem to be her top products, but that's you, you, there's an unlimited, um, and I, I I'm going to bet that uh, Jacob's going to send out probably our full product list um, that will give you a, a, a sort of a cheat sheet that you can you can reference if you're looking to submit a risk to us. Okay, so now we're going to dig into a little bit of um, of how how to grow your book. So one of the things that I, I, I definitely see often with brokers, and, and by the way, I, I was a retail commercial broker for many years before uh, I went into the wholesale uh, business. Uh, and so I totally understand what you guys go through. When I became a wholesaler, I knew exactly what I wanted to deliver rather than um, what I, the service I was getting. Uh, so one of the things that is easy, you know, we're constantly not paying attention to on our our um, renewals and even new business is you may they, someone may approach you for one of their policies, you know, to quote on if it's new business. You may have one policy as a renewal, um, but again, you you must always be soliciting and going after other coverages 
um, because you don't want to lose the business to the other broker who's going to be trying to get your business. And in addition, you have an E and L exposure if you're not offering some of the, you know, the uh, ancillary type coverages such as uh, employment practices liability, um, your uh, cyber liability, and fidelity computer fraud, where you may need a, stand, a, a comprehensive standalone policy uh, rather than just some thrown-in coverage on, on a package policy. So you can see here, there's a lot to think about when you're, you know, you're going, you know, going to work with a commercial client. You, it's really important to address all of these coverages so that you're, you're not caught. They're, they're always likely to have a loss on the, on, uh, in, an, uh, in a coverage area that you may not have offered. We know that's an E&L exposure, and, um, and, and it's easy to get caught in that. So uh, make sure that you're offering all those coverages uh, and, and addressing them with your insured. Um, we've got some templates on our um, website that are actually great proposal templates for you as a retailer to present, you know, to gather, and they they could, they will package up a, a combination of all these coverages so that you could at least offer the coverage in the proposal, you know, showing the premium separately, um, so that they have the option to choose. Uh, and and we actually have you know where they a little box where they can sign off and um, choose the coverage or not choose the coverage. Um, and that way, they're actually signing the, their signature there, whether they've selected it or accepted it. And that's a great way to cover your E&O you know, exposure. Um, those are on our website, and they're Word documents. You can just make them your own. You don't see what you need. You can, um, uh, you know, uh, e email us, and, and we'll, we'll we'll create something for you. Okay, so let's talk about new business a little bit. Um, in, in, in many cases, you know, most agencies struggle with new business. Everyone ends up being really good. Well, sometimes we're, we're too good at service. I'm sure people are nodding their heads. And that, that ends up taking up so much of your time that you, you don't even get to pay enough attention to renewals, but that would probably be the second thing that you would pay the most attention to. And then the third thing is new business, which usually is not, you know, uh, the, the, a, 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 a focus um, that is, uh, has a plan behind it. So one of the things, so you have to pay attention uh, and you have to manage your service uh, as efficiently as possible, but it's really important to set up systems. Um, that's what our, our success, and we took our retail systems and then just transferred it into our wholesale environment. So we run off a, a renewal system, and we call it a six, and I make, I'll probably go into it. So I, um, I'm, I'm just checking forward to see whether I do. Uh, well, maybe not. Um, we, we call it the 60-30-10. 60 days, gather information on a renewal. 30 days, um, propose the, get your, you know, decide and propose your coverage. And, um, and then 10 days is a reminder to the insured. So that, we function that way. We, uh, we, we support you in functioning the same way with your insured. So you, we, you can count on us to be out, you know, to, to be communicating that way on your renewals. Um, but new business, um, should actually be similar that can run off of a 60, 30, 10 if you're managing it. Um, and we don't think that you should be um, managing your new business by uh, the month. We think it should be uh, be managed by week. You, if you wait a month to see how much new business you wrote, you're it's you, you're, you're going to end up most likely being like 45 days from the first date that you would would be looking back to see how you did. So we look at it weekly. We publish it in our office weekly to see how we did as an organization. So that way, you're at, you're you're like if if you're not doing as well as you need to be doing, then you can um, then you can actually turn the ship around and start moving in another direction much faster than waiting 
uh, to, to look at it at the end of each month. You're looking at it at the end of each week. How did I do? And that prospecting needs to be really important um, because, you know, it takes time to build, you know, to build some momentum up uh, and to be out there actually gathering X dates that, you know, over time you'll be able to quote. Because if you go out there, you're not necessarily going to be able to quote the first first one that you come across because their expiration date may not be coming up for another three months, four months, five months. So manage your new business. Now, I'm going to say this, managing your new business weekly is going to be important. But we're going to, we're going to say that manager renewals, we recommend that you do those by month and by effective date. Okay? Let's keep going. So now we're going to talk a little bit about managing your renewal process. And again, set up systems. So we um, we think tracking your um, renewals by an expiration report, report um, it's definitely the most important the way to do it. And it, you're going to end up on our website, we actually have a template. It's, a, it's, it's an Excel spreadsheet, and it sets up January, February, all the way through, and you can then start the year over again. And you, you, you would... You would now, if you have an agency management system, you could just print it out. If you don't, like say you're a farmer's agent, you're you can manage it by your outside book by an Excel spreadsheet. We have that on our um, broker tools, I believe, uh, uh, tab under um, templates. I believe it's there. Um, and Jacob could probably uh, send a link with uh, that so that you have that for anyone who might need something like that to track your renewal and that way once you get them all inputted to, uh, into the Excel spreadsheet you you're able to manage them year to year uh, and the important thing to do with that is um, you want to track them make sure that you, you you've renewed them you know what the status of them and then once you have renewed them then you're going to be looking to make sure that the policy is issued and thus, when a policy is issued, usually, unless it's um, unless it's uh, agency bill, which you you would get your commission up front um, on direct bill, you're waiting for the policy issuance. Usually, triggers the commissions to be paid um, to the wholesaler, and then we pay you. So, but you're looking to make sure that your policy got issued and that you you received your commissions. You, as I mentioned before, you really want to treat that renewal like new business. You want to send a, a, a written proposal and confirm a, a renewal bind order. So again, commercial business is not as service intensive uh, as personal lines. So you may not be in communication with the, uh, the business in, you've insured, um, but once a year. But it's really important to do a good job when you do that renewal comes up because there's potentially someone else that's going to be, um, um, you know, hunting that business for their, ins you know, to handle their insurance. And it's it's really the relationship that you've built up, the trust level that you've built up with them that's going to help have them be loyal to you. Um, but you have to, you, you have to treat them, um, you know, like, you're, like you've just written their business for the first time, each renewal. And then you want to monitor your renewal retention. So let's just say, you know, you want how, how much business did you lose, not renew? Okay, you want to you want to keep that down between 10 to 15 percent. 15 percent at the, the greatest. 10 percent is probably more ideal, or even less. Uh, and that that um, that's going to tell you how you're doing because if you're losing a lot of that for your renewals, that's your bread and butter. So it's, that's why you really need to work your renewals and monitor how well you're doing. And, and really, that's a matter of taking the amount of premium that you lost and dividing it by that month's book uh, total premium. And that's going to give you a, a ratio um, that will tell you how, how you're actually doing. And then this is a great opportunity on renewals to cross-sell other insurance at, uh, at renewal. And again, all those coverages that I showed you previously are where you really want to be putting it out there. And if nothing else, if you're not going to go out and actually get quotes, 
because you don't have enough information, um, then you could create your proposal in a way that you're, you're asking them if they would like to get a quote on these coverages and maybe giving them a little blurb about each. Um, so I think some of our templates, uh, proposal templates, have that language on there that you could you you could you could um, uh, you take and use for your for your own. And then asking for referrals, if you if your insurers are happy with you, that's at your renewal. It's the best time to ask. Referrals are a great reflection of how you're doing as a company. We get a lot of referrals, and I I'm proud of that because I think it's. That, you know, it's the job we're doing for our brokers that they're happy and wanting to share that, share us with other people. And then, um, as I mentioned before, the renewal retention and the new business production, it needs to be a 50-50, equal, equal emphasis for your agency to be profitable. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about retaining your commercial renewal. So the retention of commercial clients really depends on and PIF, that's policy enforced count um, per insured. Okay, that that really you, so and, and as I mentioned that 50/50. So you need to be retaining your commercial clients. At the same time, you have to be getting new business because inherently you're going to lose some business. So that combination, you want to show PIF growth, policy enforced growth, meaning and uh, meaning that you're retaining most of your um, commercial renewals and that you are growing some new business into your agency. That's key. Um, again, uh, cross-selling. Is, here's another example of the importance of that because your retention will be better um, the more policies you have per insured because they've put that trust level into you and and they're not as likely to be to go shopping on you when you have more than one policy with them um, and so obviously the more PIF per insured the easier it is to retain the business um, and then don't forget, you need to know what coverages your clients need. Yeah, not every business is going to need the same insurance. Um, and so you really need to, and if you don't know, then ask one of our underwriters um, what other coverages that they may need. Know who controls the other insurance, right? Who's your competition? Uh, ask where those other policies are. I can't tell you how often and how difficult it is when you have two brokers on an account uh, for a business and you, you, you've written one portion, one policy, and, and you don't even ask about where the other insurance is. And that's generally, you want to be the, the person who does know and who, who's asking for that business, asking to, to quote that business for them. Um, so that's, that's really crucial because otherwise you're going to lose it. Ultimately, you will lose it because you're you're not paying attention to um, who your competition is. And uh, cross sell the other insurance at the time of renewal, as I mentioned before, uh, and start the 60, 30, 10, follow up 60 days prior to the renewal date, gathering updated information, any changes to the business. Um, and we're going to be asking for that information from you uh, if you're working with us. So it's sort of a reminder coming from us. And then make sure you're providing formal insurance proposals. Don't send out the quotes that we send you unless we're giving you one that can go retail to your insured. Um, we may, in some cases, provide those, but not it, for the most part. That is not what we're going to be sending you. you. You need to do your own formal insurance proposals that are customized for that insurer. Okay, so tools on our website. Here's a sample of one of our uh, Word documents. Um, and, and this is what we call a template. And the red area is, so you would keep this template uh, and, and never, you know, if you type, you would type into it in all the red areas, and then you would go ahead and save it 
and then save it under the insured name so you have that document and you can store you know in your agency management system or wherever that you store your um, your 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 documents by for each insured and um, this is just an example this is the workers comp proposal but on our website we've got applications like um, the I, I've already talked about the recorded webinars and marketing flyers um, and then we have the proposal templates we've got sample invoice templates broker of record claim templates certificate notice and then uh, risk profile templates which are great for uh, the heavy property like apartments uh, lesser's risk and your um, community associations so a lot of information you've got to gather on those these are sort of worksheets that you can you can like a cheat sheet for you to gather information in order to fill out the accord app and and to submit for a quote so I that this is this is the end of the webinar I I'm basically giving you just a little bit uh, of education we have coming up in December the second version like the advanced version of um, you know it is advancing your commercial book uh, and um, I, I believe that's on our calendar for de uh, December and I'll be teaching that we'll go in more depth uh, in that particular uh, webinar so uh, please uh, sign up for that particular webinar and um, and for those of you that we're doing business with now I thank you for your business and those that are just thinking about checking us out uh, I, I I recommend that you you know submit a risk and see how we take care of you and um, we we um, appreciate I appreciate you joining us today and then please visit our website um, to find uh, all the goodies that we have available thank you for joining us bye